This is Professor McEwen, and what we're going to look at today is how to do endnotes in the Chicago Manual of Style. Basically, how do I put them in? Well, as we already know, or you should see, is that when citing a source in the Chicago Manual of Style, that the source is always in quotation marks. So when we look at here, the Association of Farmers and Labor and Reform Groups repudiated laissez-faire demanding economic and political reforms to stress farmers and workers, that they are in quotations. Now the big question is, how do I get that number in there? Well, that's very easy. So when you're looking at the Word document, which you should be using when you submit it to the assignment folder, if you go up here and you will see an exponent, okay? superscript so you click on that and then all you have to do is type in the number one all right so far so good now since it's called in notes that means it comes at the very end of the last thing you're writing so here we will see where the end note will go so it goes numerical order and here we just type in the number one and this is coming from my lecture video Michael McEwen, Politics in the Gilded Age, 1877 and 1900. Where was it retrieved by? YouTube. On what day? So here the student the same retrieved it on December 14th, 2022. Now what you see here the, the, is the timestamp, 3950 to 4002. That means if I go and I click on this URL and I go to 3950 to 4002, I will find that. So far, so good? Okay, then let's go to endnote number two. So once again in the writing, we see the quotations, the italics, and then go right back to the exponent, click on it, and put in number two. That way, when you scroll down and you go to the second one, this is now from the textbook. Now the textbook is the same former format, is that you have the author's first and last name, the name of the textbook you're using in the class and in parentheses would be the publisher, city, the publisher, the year of publication, then you end the parentheses in the page number that is found. So far, so good? Excellent. Now let's go to the third endnote. Here we see discoveries of gold across the globe crushed the silver movement. So once again, very simple, exponent, number three and now when we're coming down since we use both the textbook and both uh, the video lecture you are not required to put the full information so as we can see here for endnote number three all that is required is the last name of the author if it's a textbook and you can do a shortened version of the text which you see here is united states history and the page number well, let's say, for example, well, what if it's a video? How will that look? Well, that's very simple. It's just McEwen and then politics in the Gilded Age and then the timestamp. Let's just say for the timestamp for here is uh, 40, 30 to 40. 40. Okay? Once again, as what we're seeing here, is that you don't need to use the full information. Now let's say you're going back and you're using for your fourth endnote, which will be stated right here, uh, which is the fourth, and of course you're only allowed to use four endnotes in total. Let's say you're using my lecture again. Then you use the word ibid. And then what would be the timestamp? For the timestamp here, let's say it's 50, 0, 0 to 50, 15. The same thing would go for if it was for the textbook. And let's say for the textbook, it would be Newman. It would be it would still be Ibn. Provided that this one was Newman and Schaubach before and just the page number, let's say, was 330. So hopefully this will explain to you how to actually do 
the uh, end notes in the Chicago Manual of Style. If you have any, any questions, please don't hesitate uh, to contact me, uh, and then I will uh, try to get back to you and help you as quickly as possible. And just as another reminder, you can always send me your discussion before 4 p.m. on Thursday. I'll correct it, critique it, and get it back to you so you can get a better grade. So, have a good day.